Today we are at our hackerspace Das Labor and we are going to investigate a laptop with the model name XMG C404 which is actually a gigabyte model P34. Uh, now if you look for it you will find that it has multiple revisions so we will have to find out the correct revision for this one later. Uh, but first uh, the issue here is that the touchpad does not really function sometimes when you turn it on and the operating system doesn't even recognize the device. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open it, which I already did here, and we're going to look for the SPI NOR flash chip where we will find the firmware, because this is where the issue might actually be. You see this tiny chip here, which has a green dot, and that's the SPI chip. So first, if we want to read this, we'll need some extra tools. Here we have a SOIC 8 test clip, so you can attach it directly to the chip. And on the other hand, I have this SPI flasher, which is a CH341A programmer, which you can get for a few dollars on eBay or Amazon. If you look closely at the chip, you will notice that there is a tiny mold in the upper left corner, which is what marks pin 1. And on my test clip here, I have a pink line, which also marks pin 1, so I know how to connect it. I have disconnected the battery here to make sure this board is not on power now. I have connected the clip and attached the programmer. So that I can now dump the existing firmware. And to do that we're going to use another tool named flash ROM, which is now part of the core boot project. Now you can already see I've typed the command here and we're going to read the chip at least three times. You could see that flash ROM could not correctly detect the chip and it gives you multiple options. This can happen multiple times, I already had this like a hundred times, so what you need to do is you can just detach the programmer again from your USB port, which you should do first so you don't have voltage on it. Then you detach the clip again and you look very closely at the IC. I already did that now so I know which actual chip we have here. Now I hit enter to read the ROM. With the cheap programmer it actually takes a while. So I'm going to skip this for now. Now I have dumped the firmware three times, I have calculated the MD5 hashes, which are all the same, which suggests that I probably always got the same and the correct values here. And in the next step, I'm using IFD tool, which is also part of the core boot project, to extract one of the ROMs, which will give us the multiple regions which you actually find in there. So in this case we had three regions, the flash descriptor, which is kind of the header describing all the other regions and which might be locked or not. We have the BIOS region and we have the Intel ME region. I said earlier that we would need to investigate the actual version of this board. So what I've done is I've just dumped the strings from the BIOS region and as you can see here, it says P34 V2 something, so I assume that it's a version 2 board. And so I went to the Gigabyte website and downloaded some updates for it. I got several zip files and to make sure it's really the same thing, I extracted those as well. Looked at the dumped regions using the IFD tool 
and investigate it even further using another tool named UEFI tool, which you can use to investigate UEFI BIOS files. Comparing both images, you will see that the layout is the same. The BIOS region is also the same and also the size. So what I will try to do now is write back an upgraded image to my laptop. And for that, I'm going to use the programmer again. And if you're asking yourself why I'm actually going through this procedure, let me tell you that the vendor thought that they should only provide upgrades for people who use a Windows operating system, leaving out anyone else using a VSD or something like GNU with a Linux kernel or something. So now I'm just going to do this in straight hardware. There is another tool named FWUPD, the firmware update tool, which relies on a platform where vendors can also upload their BIOS images. But since Gigabyte doesn't do that, I will have to do this myself now. I only want to write the BIOS region, so I'm passing the L parameter to flash ROM to read from a layout file, passing the I parameter to indicate which region I want to write, and the upgrade file, which is the one I got from Gigabyte. So let's hit enter. And now we're writing back to our little chip here. And hopefully this device is going to boot again. Otherwise, I will just have to write back the original firmware. The procedure takes a while. And what FlashROM is now going to do is it's reading the old flash contents first. Then it's going to erase the chip, write the new contents, and eventually check that it actually wrote the correct stuff by reading back again and comparing with the image I wanted to write. As you can see, writing just succeeded. So let's try to turn on the device again and let's hope and pray that it will successfully boot. Let's hope and pray. Okay, we see light down here, but we don't see an image on the screen. Oh, now we actually do. It says Gigabyte. And here we are. We are in the BIOS. Success. Now I just booted from a USB drive and what you can see here on the screen now is a very nice Windows setup tool and as you can see the touchpad actually works. We can move the mouse and we can even click and exit the installer. I am now booting the actual operating system which I have installed on a disk here. But as you can see, something apparently went quite wrong because we're getting ACPI BIOS errors here. And if I keep booting the system, it would just shut off.